Welcome to Biology Access. In today's video, we'll be talking about diabetes cross in genetics. If you know you are new to this channel, kindly hit the like button and subscribe so that you get a notification in our subsequent video. In diabetes cross, it involves the, uh, the meeting or the crossing of organism studying towards character. In this case, I'll be using height and color. Tall and short, both of them is height, color. Can be any so in this case we'll be using yellow and what green using tall is dominant over what short which means that if both of them are present this organism will be actually be what tall because this is dominant over this this will be expressed and this will be suppressed this will be dominant over this so that means if this and this are present this organism will be what yellow because this is dominant over this okay so this is the example we are going to we'll be using a pea plant that is actually what this and this so let's go homozygote what tall and yellow pea plant homozygote what short and green pea plant first step is that you look for the gamut in this case the gamut how do i get the gamut i'll put this double t separate them and attach this double g to each one just the way it is written on the board. After this, you just pick out your gamut. Capital letter T and capital letter G. Bring it out. Capital letter T and capital letter G. You do likewise. And see here, capital letter T, capital letter G. Here, capital letter T and capital letter G. To know the number of gamut that is produced by a single parent, you already know the formula is 2 raised to power n, which is 2 raised to power 2 equals to what? 4. So you do the same for this. And you pick out the gamut for both of them. Once you bring out the gamut, you can see the gamut for this is written here, and the gamut for this is written here. You put them, you draw your opponent square. Consisting of what? Five word rows and five word column. Now you put pick your gamut from this parent. You can put it here or here. Either way, you get the same answer. I put the gamut from the second parent, either here or here. So I choose to put the gamut from this in this place and here, here. So once you get this, this first column is connected to this gamut and it's connected to the gamut. So I picked everything here and everything here. Capital letter T is dropped here first, followed by small letter T, capital letter G, and small letter G. This second space is connected to this gamut and this gamut. So I'll put capital letter T here and small letter T. The same letter must be together. Right, and why they are the same? Why the same letter must be together? You must note that capital letter must come first. So why this capital letter G will come and small letter G will come? So we repeat the same. Let me just do for the last one. This one is connected to this, and it's also connected to this gamut. So capital letter T and small letter T. Why capital letter G and small letter word G? So you realize that everything is actually the same. So the F1 generation is all tall and what yellow why are all of them tall and yellow you realize that look at this this one is dominant over this so this organism will be tall this is dominant over this this organism will be what yellow so all the organisms are actually tall and yellow if i now ask what is the probability of having a tall and yellow pea plant when you cross when you cross a homozygote tall and yellow uh, pea plant and homozygote short and green word pea plant knowing that this is what dominant the answer is simple all of them are actually what tall and yellow so the probability of getting that is one all of them are tall and yellow so which is 16 all over all 16 remember formula for probability is required outcome all over total outcome the total outcome in this case is 16 you can count the number of buses there is 16 and how many is actually tall and yellow is also 16 so in that case it's 16 all over 16 which the answer is what one if I now ask you, what is the probability of having a short and yellow pea plant? Do we have any short and yellow pea plant here? No. So the probability is actually what? Zero. Probability of having any other thing apart from tall and yellow is actually what? Zero. Now, we can decide to cross this first filler generation. This offspring, crossing this and this, you have this offspring. And this offspring is called what? The first filler generation. Once you cross this first filler generation, you get the second filler generation. A human will call it grandchildren this is like the children and this the when, once you cross this you have what the grandchildren so let's cross this first filler generation now you can pick you, you can you realize that this is this 
this and this, they are what? Offspring of what? They are the first filler generation. If you cross them, you get the gamut the same way. I pick this capital letter T and small letter T, I drop it here, then I attach both of them. This two J, I attach it to this. Attach it to what? The second one. Then I now pick this. You have it here. This and this you have here. This and this you have here. And this and this you have here. Remember, I pick these two, I separate them here. Then I attach these two to each one. Attach these two to the first one and attach these two to the second one. Like this. Then I now pick it out. This and this here. This, this here. This and this here. And this and this here. So knowing that the formula for getting number of gametes produced is actually four. So you, you have your four. You repeat the same thing here. Once you repeat it, you put your answers also in what the Punnett square. Now take note. It doesn't matter. You can decide to put this one here and you can decide to put any one in the what the horizontal or the vertical or space. Now after putting it here, you repeat the procedure that happened in that first crossing. How? This space here is connected to this and it's connected to this. So I pick capital letter T and capital letter T. So both of them are here. Capital letter G, capital letter G. Both of them are here. Here, we repeat the same thing. Capital letter T here. Capital letter T here. Now you can see this one, that this one is small letter G. And this is capital letter G. So I'll put this capital letter first and before what? The small letter. Now, take note of that. This is capital letter T. And this is capital letter T. This is capital letter G. And this is capital letter G. I'll repeat the same. This space is connected to this gamut and it's connected to this gamut. So I'll repeat the same thing. Capital letter T. And capital letter T. Then, capital letter G. And capital letter, uh, small letter word G. So I'll repeat it. Let me, as you, let me come to this space. This is connected to this and it's connected to what? This gamut. So small letter T. Small letter T. Small letter T, and here also we have small letter T. Here we have capital letter G, and here we have capital letter G. So once you get the gamut from these parents and the gamut from these parents, you put it in your Punnett square as usual as we did in the first crossing. Then you can you start getting the second filler generation. How do you do that? For this place, you pick what is the gamut. This gamut is connected to this place, and this one is connected to this place. So you pick this capital letter T, capital letter T here. Capital letter G, capital letter G, put it here. This is connected to this side and also to this gamut. I put this and this, I put it here. Then you can see this is capital, uh, small letter G and this is capital letter G. So the capital letter G has to come first for the small letter word G. Let's take a look at this. This one is connected to this gamut and it's connected to this gamut. So this is small letter T and this is small letter T. Capital letter G, capital letter word G. Both of them represented here. Likewise, you can decide to choose this. This is connected to this gamut and this gamut. So we have small letter T, small letter T. Now we now have capital letter G and small letter G represented there. So you just fill in all the blank spaces. Now, after getting that, you now take a look at the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio. How do you get the phenotype? Phenotype is what is observed, as you know, or what you see, what is expressed. So to get the phenotype, We'll quickly take a look at this. How many of these organs is actually what? Tall and yellow. This is actually tall and yellow. So all the organs that is tall and yellow will present with the figure one. All right. This is tall and yellow. One. Also tall and yellow because this is masking this one. Also tall and yellow because this is masking this one. 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 Tall and yellow. Tall and yellow. Tall and yellow. So and yellow. So do we really have any other? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine tall and yellow. After that, we represent tall and green. Since this gene is for green, you can see it. Both of them in this place is green. So see this gene is for green. This is two. Tall and green. This is also tall and green too. We have any other tall and green? Yes, tall and green. So we have TV tall and green. Present with TV. Then we we'll now look at the next one. This is short, but yellow. So we present that with TV. The same thing, TV, TV, because this is short and this is what yellow, TV. And the last one, this is short and green. Present with four. 
So that's how we get have the phenotypic equation for dihybrid cross. Phenotypic equation for dihybrid cross is what nine ratio three ratio three ratio one. Why we have the genotypic ratio? So get the genotypic ratio. You then look at the outward appearance. Genotype is the genetic makeup. So we are going to look at the genetic makeup of the individual organism. In this case, that's how we're going to look at it. The genotypic ratio. So how do we do that? I'll start by looking at this. This is capital letter T. This is capital letter T. Capital letter G. Capital letter G. We are looking at the exact gene. Do you have any other one like this? The answer is no. So we present this with one. We have only one of it here. This type is the same with this type. Capital letter, capital letter, cap uh, capital letter, small letter, the same. Presented with two. So we have two of it here. This is the same thing as this. We have three of this, uh, two of it here also. This, 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 and this, they are the same. Four. Can look through the four. They are the same. So we have four of them there. This is just one. You can look through and see if you get another. And let me know. We have one of that here. This, do we have any other one of like this here? Yes, we do. I've seen another one. This and this. Six. Now we present the next one with. Do we have any other one like this here? The answer is no. So just one here. Then this and this they are also the same. And the last one. Okay. So we have nine different words, genotype present in this case. Take a look at the phenotype again. Nine are yellow and uh, tall and yellow. Three is tall and green. Three is short and yellow. And one is what? Short and what? Green. Please take notes. You can be asked probability questions. What is the probability of getting a tall and yellow plant? If you cross heterozygote, tall and yellow pea plant with another heterozygote, tall and yellow pea plant. Probability in this case is required outcome. The required outcome in this case is tall and yellow. And how many do we have? Nine. All about total outcome. The total outcome is 16. Add everything here together. I'll just count everything there. Which is 9 all over 16 as our answer. I can also ask you, what is the probability of having a short and green root plant? P plant. In this case, required outcome is what? 1. While the total outcome is actually 16. So, various questions can be asked. In some mathematical cases, you can be you can ask what the probability of having a tall and yellow or short and green. So, Various questions are there. If you know you need further explanation, you can drop it in the comment section. If you have any problem, do the same. Drop it in the comment section. And we can produce video on that in our subsequent production. Thank you.